What's up everyone, Matt here. In this video, I'm gonna go over how you can implement security filters to allow multi companies to use the same AppSheet app. Okay, so let's say that you've got an AppSheet app and you want to design this thing so that multiple companies can use the same app. Uh, the benefit of doing this is that uh, instead of having to maintain multiple apps, one for each company, um, that's a duplication of efforts there. If you make any kind of updates or changes, if you're going to include any kind of new functionality or anything like that, uh, then you have to go through to every single one of those apps and include that function in, and include that functionality on all of them. Um, uh, the other way to do this, the more efficient way, uh, would be to conform your app to allow all of these different people to use the app, but the app understands these people are for this company, these people are for this company, so users only see the appropriate data that they should. There's a couple of key facts that you need to know before implementing this. Uh, this methodology assumes that you have a company table and a users table and then you know whatever other ones you know clients projects whatever after that um, but uh, with this method I am assuming that the company table is going to be the top of the database and then users and then everything else is like under that so the key in making all of this work is having a field on the company table that has an enum list of all of the emails that should have access to that company record it's a master email list for the company so when the system loads we can use a simple in statement and say is user email the result of that inside this master list uh, once we have that, then we can filter the user table based on the company table, and then we can filter the client's prod, all the other tables we can filter based on the, those two. So the, first we need, so the first thing we need to do is add that master company email list. Let's do that right now. So I already have one for my company owner email, so I'll throw another one in here. Company, copy it from here. Go back and regenerate my column structure. Grab that new column. All right, so here we are. So we need to hide this. And this needs to be an enum list of emails. Save that so it propagates through the system. Next, we need to create an action on the company's table that will set the value of that column that we just made. I'm going to copy the name of that action. It's on the company's table. And the do this is set the values of some columns in this row. And so the columns we need to set is the master email list. And the value we want to set this to is a dereference, a list dereference expression from all of the related users. So the company has a list of associated user records and we want to pull all of the emails from all of those and put them in this column. That's what this is going to do. So we need inside the user table to grab the name of the email column and put that in our list dereference formula. And with this, we have an action that will update the master email list so that it's always corresponding to whatever the actual list of emails of users is. After we create this action, we need to run this action. Uh, the reason being, um, if we go and we look at the company's table, we created the column and there's no values inside it. So we need to populate that on each company record that you have. So like I only have one inside this table. If I had five, I need to go to each company record and one by one press that action that we just made so that it puts the value here. Okay, so if we go and look at our company's table, we can see our action here. And so I'll push that and then I'll push the sync so that we can see what it does so yeah there's only one email 
um, inside the, the system because I only have one user record, but you get the gist. So after we have run this action, we can put it back to do not display so that we don't see it because this is a background data set action. It's something that we're gonna execute elsewhere. So this is just a, a background operation thing. Uh, the next step is to create a new action on the user table. So this is a ref set action. This is exactly what I was just talking about. This is gonna be the action that calls this one and says, hey, run. It lives on the user's table. The name is I just copied the name um, and what the action we're going to do here is we are going to execute an action on a set of rows and the set of rows is from the company's table and the actual rows is going to be so inside my user table I have a company link and you need to wrap that in a list there you go and the referenced action we want to run is the one we just created, set company master email list, right? So now we have the ability to trigger that update on the company's table from the user's table. And this again is gonna be a background style action. So I like to put this little tweet thing so I can always know that, oh, this is something that's not a button, it's not visible. Before I get into anything else, I wanna take a moment and talk about today's sponsor. AppSheetTraining.com. You've likely seen or heard something from the guys over at CrewTech in the community. They put together an AppSheet training platform for maximum learning speed and skill acquisition. With an ever-growing library of on-demand content, as well as live instructor-led courses, they have something for everyone. Whether it's data table design, expressions, workflows, UX design, or any other AppSheet topic, they have you covered. Head on over to AppSheetTraining.com and use the code MULTITECH15 for 15% off any guided path or module. Alright, back to what we were talking about. The next step is to create a bot to keep that master list updated whenever there's changes to the user table. So, I'll go to Automation, I'll create a new bot, and I will call this uh, Maintain master email list uh, the event that happens I'm gonna make a new one and this will be uh, any user record change right so it's a data change on users all changes uh, you know I you could go in here and you could say only do it when they add um, but then you run into the problem of when, when they delete, you're not going to get this update to happen again. Um, you're also, uh, if, if you don't do updates, then what happens if somebody comes in because they did a typo for the email? So that's why you leave it on all changes. You want this to run anytime somebody makes any kind of change to the user table. Now, obviously, there's a whole lot of situations where we don't want this update to happen. So our condition is that the login email before this record was edited does not equal the login email after. So it's only when the email changes. So this is, uh, this is true upon when somebody's adding a record because before it didn't exist. Uh, this is true when someone deletes a record because afterward it doesn't exist. Um, so this should trigger the condition. This should trigger the update anytime somebody changes the emails, whether they're adding, deleting, or updating. And the thing that we want to do, we'll make a new task. We want to run a, uh, a data change. And if we click on go to task, uh, we can select ref set up update company email list. So I'll give this a name. So we have update company emails. Yep, see all this is gonna happen from any user record change. I'll give this a, uh, a name. And with that, we've got the master email list for our company record present in the system. It's got data in the system and there is a, um, an automation in place to keep that updated. 
So the next step that we need to do is actually implementing the security filters. And so it all starts with this company's table. All everything that we've done up to this point is just to get to, the, to here where we can say with a simple in statement is the user email in that list on the company table. And so that's the ultimate like real, like it boils down to that right there. Are they inside that list? If they are, they can use the system. If they're not, well, they can use the system and see that company record. And then like everything will cascade off of that. So let's implement some security filters. So the first thing we wanna do is we'll, we'll go to data tables, right? And we'll open up the companies table and go to the security filter. And so what we want to do here is this one's really simple. If we look at the step by step guide, you can see I have the formula right here. So you can just copy it and paste it inside there. If you use the same column name, that's all that we need to do on the company table on the user table. It's the exact same thing. It's just another in statement. We say is the user's company link inside the company's table. And with those two simple in statements, you've now implemented security filters on your device, on your app. Uh, when any one person logs in, the if they don't have an email inside the companies and any of the company records in that master email column that we just made, uh, none of the company records will, sh will show, which means none of the user records will show. And if you have your security filters based on the user table, then if that's empty, everything else is going to be empty too. And so when the person logs in and their email isn't in any of those master email lists on the company table, everything is empty. All the tables are blank. So I'm not gonna go over how to include all of those other security filters here. That's kind of a wildly different thing. It's all dependent upon the app, your data, the tables, everything like that. Um, but if you would like to see how, an implementation of how you can include security filters on the app that I've been using in this video, uh, you can join my Patreon page where I have an extended version of this video where I go into details on each of the individual tables inside that app I was using. And I also include uh, security filters that allow for a new user flow, meaning when a person first logs in and their email isn't in any of the lists, what do the security filters do that will still allow somebody to create their record in like a beginning onboarding type flow? So if you'd like to see how that's done, go to my Patreon page. You can check out the video there. So to wrap up, what we've done is we've included a new column on the top of the database that holds a master list of all of the emails that should have access. Then we've cascaded all of our security filters, all, the, all of them essentially routing their way back to that company table. And so with a cup with using nothing but simple in security filters, we can say is, should this company record be shown? Yes, no, yes, no, yes, no. And then everything else looks to the company table for its filtering. Hey, I just wanted to say thanks for watching the video. Make sure you give it a like and a thumbs up and make sure you subscribe. It really helps the channel with all the algorithm stuff that's going on I'm trying to build. Also, if you really want to show your love, you can head on over to patreon.com slash multitech. There's some goodies over there. It's 10 bucks a month. I got a lot of good stuff going on over there. Check it out. Otherwise, I'll see you in the community.